Shalom, good evening. Welcome once again to the Digging Deep. I just want us to all worship all together uh, as we go to the study of the world this evening. Can we have some worship? Let's just close our eyes and worship the Lord. Father will bless you, Father will bless you. Jesus, 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 we bless you, Jesus. There's no like you. You are the King of Kings, the Rose of Sharon, the Bright and Morning Star, the one who was, the one who is, the one who will continue to be. Blessed be your holy name. Mighty one in Bertu, we exalt your holy name. Maskata la bada la basha ta. What a wonder you are. Just worship the Lord, worship the Lord, give him the praise he deserves, exalt his holy name and magnify his holy name. Father, we thank you, we bless your holy name, we give you the praise because you are God and you are God alone. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the opportunity. We exalt your holy name. Father, we ask that as we go into your word tonight, we ask that your spirit will teach us like never before, that you open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of thy law. And we ask that we will be doers of your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, most precious Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Hallelujah. Once again, I welcome you to another session of Digging Deep. And we are glad on the God that he has preserved all of our lives till this very moment. It's indeed a privilege and we are not taking this for granted. Particularly the fact that he is making us to see the second to the very last Digging Deep in this month. And I trust that Almighty God that has brought us thus far will take us to the end in the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Now, uh, we are looking at a topic which is a continuation of the series of topics we have been looking at uh, because when we started our Father in the Lord in our parish here, Pastor Joshua Olaleye has taken us through uh, the first part to the third part of the topic, I know who I am. And so we're taking the fourth part today and we are still looking at part four of the topic that says, I know who I am. It's a statement of confirmation. It's a statement showing confidence in knowledge. 
that is confidence in what we already know. I know who I am. And also beyond the statement showing confidence is a personalized statement. Not I know who he is, not I know who she is, is I know who I am. Can you boldly tell yourself, I know who and by God's grace today, uh, we want to study further on that topic, how it determines how far we will go. And then in the second part, we looked at how we are branches and we have the Holy Spirit of God in us. And then in the third part, which we looked at last week, where we took our text from the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 11 to verse 14, we looked at the outlines that says, my father the I am that I am. So we basically studied more on who God is as the I am that I am and how he is the controller of the universe. But today we are also going to be going further in that light to know who God is. Because of all the statements or all the questions that will help us to fulfill destiny in life, of all the statements that will help us to actualize and fully utilize our potentials, which are what we call discovery questions, one of the most important discovery questions we must always ask is the question of who we are. So we have started discovering ourselves by knowing who we are. And as we discover who we are, we will understand that the more you discover who you are, the more you will know the benefits that accrue to your person. The more you will know the benefits that are allocated to the person of who you are. When a child sees himself as a servant, then he will not be able to get the maximum benefit of a child because he sees himself as a servant. So he will get the benefits of a servant. The question of who I am is worth considering and is one of the greatest series of discovery questions that any man or woman must ask to be able to fulfill potentials here or not. And other questions that are in similar light could be where did I come from? Where am I heading to? What am I here to do? And these are the questions that will actually make one live a fulfilled life. But we are looking at the question who we are. Once we are able to decipher who we are, then we can be sure that we are on our way to the fulfillment of our destiny. And failure for us to know who we are, we keep us below the level we should live. By God's grace, we are going to be looking further into that topic today and we pray that the Almighty God himself will teach us in the name of Jesus. So, we are going to look at two lesson outlines basically, but we are going to take a text from the book of Isaiah chapter uh, 43 verse 2. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. If you are with your Bibles, you can please turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. It says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And we are looking at the two outlines. The first that says, My dad is the ever-present God. We understood that the reason why we could call God our own dad is because we are his children. We have given our lives to him. We are under God. And so we can call him our dad. But beyond that, we are now saying, my dad is the ever-present God. Can you tell yourself and announce it publicly wherever you are? My dad is the ever-present God. And the second line is also similar that says, my dad is always with me. My dad is always with me with me praise the lord now there is no place where our daddy cannot get to there is no place where our daddy cannot be at there is no place where our daddy cannot see and that is what we're talking about our father who is ever present god now one of the attributes which is peculiar to god which is what we call one of the divine attributes. And in this case, an attribute that cannot even be shared with man because no man can be ever present everywhere at the same time. It is just a direct God. It's a divine attribute. One of those attributes is what we call omnipresence. Omnipresence. That is, ability to be every place at every time at the same time. Every place, everywhere at the same time. So here we understand that our God is the ever-present God. Now, why will God want to be ever-present? It is because we as his children, we as his children fall into different situations at different times and we need his presence and therefore he's always present with us. We understand that there are certain benefits that already come your way by virtue of who is present with you. 
Let me say, for instance, I walk now, and as I'm going, I'm walking alone. It's different from when you see me walking and I have military men surrounding me. The persons who might want to approach me will have a rethink when they see the kind of person that surrounds me. Not because the military person will take an action, not because the bodyguard will take effect, but because the presence of whoever is with you confers certain kinds of benefits upon you. So, for us to know that our dad is the ever-present dad that tells us that to an extent we already have coverage. Praise God. Now, one of the divine attributes of God, like we said, is the ability for him to be present everywhere, in every place, at the same time. And so that means that in different situations that we fall into, he can always be present. When we look at the book of Psalms chapter 46, verse 1, the scripture says, The Lord is my refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. So that means that one of the times he can always be present with us is times of trouble. So if we are falling into any trouble, and these troubles could be physical, could be financial trouble. I mean, take for instance the situation going around now. Uh, some are afraid of the virus getting into their body. Some are afraid they could lose their job. Uh, psychological, spiritual, whichever the trouble is, God is saying, I am ever present there with you. If you look at the book of Job chapter 5, Verse 19 also, we understand that God has promised that in times of trouble, He's always there for us. And we know that song that says, in times of trouble, you are here for me. Don't, not only in times of trouble, beyond the time of trouble, God is there for us. Another situation where we know He is present with us, ever present, is what we saw in that book of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. And Isaiah, Isaiah 43, verse 2, we understand that when we pass through water, He's always there with us, and the waters will not overflow us. And when we pass through the fire, when you look critically at this scripture, it's not only talking about physical water. It's not only talking about physical fire, because right from the times of the scripture, in terms of physical fire, physical water, we saw God abiding by his people. Exodus tells us that uh, while they were passing through the Red Sea, the Lord was with his people. When they passed through Jordan, the Lord was with people. These were situations where they passed through physical waters. Also, the three Hebrew boys in the book of Daniel chapter 4, we saw how God was with them when they were thrown into the fairy furnace. And we understood that God was with them in that physical fire. But beyond physical fire, beyond physical water, there are spiritual connotations of water. And there are spiritual connotations of fire. That is, whatsoever situation can overwhelm us, whatsoever situation can harm or hurt us, these are situations of water and fire respectively, and God is saying he is there with us. So maybe you are already afraid that this situation is overwhelming, this situation is already getting unbearable, maybe you are passing through one pain or the other, God is saying he is there for you. And I pray that you will always understand the presence of God is with you in the name of Jesus. Also, we understand that another situation where we can see that he's always there with us is when we are passing through afflictions. When you read the book of Psalms chapter 34, Psalms chapter 34 verse 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Out of them all, not out of some of them, out of them all. In other words, the scripture makes us to clearly understand that God is not specific about the types of affl affliction he wants to deliver you from. But he's saying in all forms of affliction, he is there to deliver. Also, Acts 12, 7 to 10 tells us that when we happen to fall into bondage, have you fallen into the bondage of wrong hands? Have you fallen into the bondage of the wrong relationship? Have you fallen into the bondage of the wrong job? Have you fallen into the bondage of the wrong associations? The scripture says God is there with you, ever present. So far you are his child. That is why the, 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 the outline there is my dad is the ever present God. Also, maybe your own has gone beyond just in bondage. You are now in prison. That is, you are not only bound. You have also been locked up, as we saw in the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 26. Acts chapter 16, verse 26. We understood that when one is locked up, then God is ever present. The way he opened up the door for Paul and Silas. And then, in Psalms chapter 62, verse 11, we understand that there is a reason why he is always there with us. He is there because he needs to deliver us. He is not only present in those situations, but he has all so that he can use that power to deliver us. 
And so therefore, he can deliver us from tribulations. He can deliver us from trouble. He can deliver us from bondage. He can deliver us from afflictions. He can deliver us from the waters. He can even deliver us even from the fiery furnace. And the Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. Let me just give you uh, a, a short story like we heard from our father in the Lord about the three sharks and their mother. And uh, these three sharks uh, are, are the situation where they were already uh, predisposed to being attacked, being killed. I mean, three baby fishes that are being attacked by sharks. And they had the opportunity to make a request for what they want. One asked for many eyes so that he could see and escape by himself. Thinking that when you have more knowledge, when you have insight, that is the purpose of us. You think you can escape. He got the eyes and the eyes made him more beautiful. And so he was taken up by the enemy, the shark. The other asked for, for wings so that as soon as the enemy came out of the water. But lo and behold, we always think that when we have above the situation of escape, if the waters and as he flew out, uh, Igu saw him and uh, took him up and ate him. And the last one did not ask for all of those. All he has is the ever presence. That wherever I am going, let your presence go with me. And the, the sharks wanted to attack this only fish that was going alone. But whenever they wanted to attack, uh, attack rather, the, the baby sharks would want to attack the fish and their mother would say, don't go near. Can't you see the shadow that is in this fish? There is someone ever present. Tell yourself, God is ever present with me. Now, we're looking at a second outline, which has gone beyond God being ever present with us, to God is always with me. Now, the difference is this. I can be present with you and not be for you. But I do not take interest in your matter. The difference is when I am always with you, it means I am in tune with you. It means I have your interest at heart. And that is what we are looking at as our second outline. My dad is always with me. The very names of our dad bring comfort. We have already mentioned that the fact that he's already present with us brings us, some co brings us confidence. But the fact that we know that he is with us, he is in agreement with us, he is in our defense, gives us further boldness. Let's look at the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. From the Amplified, I like the way he puts it. He says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the young woman who is unmarried and a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. That is God with us. God will be with you always in the name of Jesus. So it is similar to what we have looked at first, but difference is God now has your interest at heart. When you see a father that doesn't have the interest of the child at heart, uh, those are the kind of father that even molest the child himself. They are the kind of father that subject the child to abuse. But when we see a father that is ever present and has our interest, that tells us that this, our particular father, is interested in our well-being. He's interested in our doing well. When you look at the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 33, it's a very long passage. It tells us that whatsoever we are passing through, nothing can separate us from that love of Christ. And nothing can stand against us and God. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? When God is interested in your matter, then nobody else can stand against you. Because anybody who now tries to stand against you is actually indirectly or directly standing against God. And we know that nobody can stand against God and win. No one can and no one will dare it. And that should be the confidence we have. We are endeavoring to know who we are. We are endeavoring to know who we are. When you read further down in verse 2, it says, God did not spare his son, but he delivered him up for us all. And so with him, he will freely give us all things. So the very first thing of the things that God has in stock for you is his son, Jesus Christ. And therefore, if he has given you his son, Jesus Christ, then he is willing to give you every other thing. But the question is, he has offered up Jesus for us. For John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave. So he has done that part. But have you received him? That's why the scriptures now says, To as many as received him, to them he gave the power. Do you want God to be with you? Have you received Jesus? Do you know the confidence? Do you have confidence in whom you have received? 
that he is ever with you. Nothing can separate us from this love of Christ. When you read further down, it says not even tribulations, not persecution, nothing can separate us from this love of Christ. Nothing can bring a charge against us. Nothing can impeach us from that position that God has put us. So far we walk in tune with him. So we not only get the benefits of his presence by the fact that he's with us, but then ultimately we become carriers of those benefits to the life of others. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 6 to 7. Isaiah chapter 46 verse chapter 42 verse 6 to 7 says, I the Lord have called thee in righteousness and will hold thy hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. So at this moment I want to tell you that you are set there as a light. You are set there as the salt of the earth. And you are expected to begin to carry out the benefits of God, even into the life of others. That is, when others are down, when they are saying there is a casting down, you will be the one telling them there is a lifting up. Why? Because you know who is ever present with you, and you know who is always with you. And therefore, God being with you gives you the confidence that there is the benefit you carry into the life of others. You need to start seeing yourself in the light of whom you have, that wherever I show up, People are protected for my sake. Why? Because of who I carry. Whenever I show up, those who are in bondage are delivered. Why? Because of who I carry. There must be a full realization of who you are. And that is the focus of our message tonight. There, let there be in your life a full realization of who you are. And I pray that as you open forth your heart, as your faith begins to glue and to adhere to who you are in Christ, benefit will be seen in your life what will be seen in the life of all your loved ones in the name of Jesus. So as I bring this teaching to a close, I want to remind you once again that the above benefit we have mentioned is only for those who are in tune with Christ. So are you born again? Have you accepted him as your Lord and personal Savior? Are you living a life that God is proud of? Are you living a life that your father can say, that is my son, I see the way he's living his life. If you are not doing so, I want you to bow down your head wherever you are and lift up your voice to God and ask for mercy and say, Father, forgive me of my sins. And if you know you have given your life to Christ, but you are not living right, ask him to forgive you and for the grace for you to live right. Go ahead, bow down your heads and pray at this moment. Pray and ask God to help you to live right. Just know that the benefits are there. It's for you to adhere to the principles. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. Let's bow down heads as we pray tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you once again for this session of Diggy Deep and for the way you have taught us your word. We ask, O oh God, that you will help us to walk in the realization of who is with us at all times in the name of Jesus. That knowing your presence with, with us will prevent us from going into that sin and will prevent us from fear in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that beyond those words, open up our hearts to understand and know the benefits we have in you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father, because you have answered our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Just to announce to you as we bring the service to a close, uh, note that on Thursday, once again, by 6.45 p.m., we're going to be coming up with a faith clinic. So just tune in online to our uh, Andrews, www.rccgstrongtower.ng.org forward slash live. Once you tune in, you will be live with us to view us. If you have testimony, just share with us on our blog. That's www.rccgstrongtower.ng.org forward slash testimonies. Share your testimonies and we'll be able to, it will boost up the faith of someone. Also on Sunday, we're going to be coming to you live by 8.30 a.m. in the morning with the Sunday school. And immediately thereafter the Sunday school, we will have our session of worship that will lead us to connect with our Father in the Lord also on our platform. God will bless you and God will keep you in the name of Jesus. Shalom.